and welcome to the PM Show, your weekly roundup of what's new and going on in the modelling world. Good morning, gentlemen. How are we this morning? Good morning. Yeah, I'm very well. Good morning, Paul. Thank you very much. Very good. Very good. Uh, first of all, thank you to everybody from the Flory family who joined us last night for our PM auction. Yep. Hope you all got some nice bargains and various things. Obviously, Andy will be on it like Sonic later today. Uh, asking for your cash yeah so your most like basic oliver outfits. with his begging bowl <laughs> around uh and everything but no thank you to everybody who joined us last night as i say it was uh, quite a nice enjoyable evening and some of you got some real bargains as well which is always good yeah not from us clearly because obviously we're a business but it's nice that you guys get some bargains uh occasionally but anyway it was a lot of fun and obviously we'll be doing some more great deals and various things coming up very shortly as well so, what's new? What's been going on this week then, guys? Can we just get the quick, the big news out of the way first? What's that? It's nice and sunny outside. <laughs> not here, cloudy. Got to mention, got to mention the weather. Unless it <laughs> doesn't, <laughs> unless it's not nice here, it doesn't count. <laughs> it's actually quite sunny here. No, it's not bad actually. We had a bit of rain, which was nice. Very needed. We haven't had any rain for ages. We'll start anyway. with this. Yes, hold on, I can I can help with that. I'm, I'm oh, on the wrong I'll, one. I like the box art. First time I've actually seen the box art. To be honest, I never knew it was actually in that scheme. Oh. It's um, from Seymour Johnson's anniversary scheme. So, Phil, talk us yeah. through it. You've reviewed it. I brought this down because obviously I went to see Phil this weekend and I've yes. got a couple of kits for him to review, and this was the first one he did. And it was. It's very uh, modular. It is. It's incredibly modular. And the thing is, I can't actually get my head around why. Um, just to show you here, you can see the blanked out areas. Obviously, this is for other versions um of it so i was i was thinking originally when i went through these instructions as you can see here that it was going to be a c uh, and a b you know sort of or a d hybrid uh, and you can obviously do the e from it and a few others but actually no you can't you can only do the strike eagle because the way that they've done this sort of design here you can see over here it, it's very very modular so a couple of nice touches with it you get full length air intakes, which is something we don't often see on 70 second scale stuff. I know we're seeing it a lot more now, so that's nice. Obviously we've got fully detailed engines, which is really good, fully detailed cockpits as well. So that's actually quite nice. But then it's a little bit sort of schoolboy errors because you've got a very older lantern and low altitude targeting pod system for it. Whereas nowadays it has modern versions like the sniper pod and things like that. So again, it's showing it old. And also you get Sparrow missiles, which that aircraft, as far as I'm aware, can't even carry or certainly these days doesn't carry so it's a little bit sort of between those two but generally the surface detail is really nice and the markings I say these markings are absolutely brilliant I haven't seen these markings before on it mm. and it just breaks up as we know what is quite a boring grey jet uh, into something a little bit special so this is their I think it's the 75th anniversary markings uh, for it as you can see really nice but again you know we were discussing this this one actually says, and I'm thinking I'm correct, Matt, and it says made in Poland. Wow, this is something we've noticed with a few of their latest releases. Hmm. So it's very crisp. There's no very flash. crisp, as you can it's, see. It's yeah. not that soft styrene either. It's that nice styrene, you know, mm -hmm. like on the Razor Crest and the Boba Fett um, spaceship, as we'll call yep. it. Yeah. So we're thinking now that obviously they've switched manufacturing to Poland. Mm-hmm which is a lot better to be honest like I say the detail yeah. is good on it into let's let's get it that is. out there it's very nice very crisp like we were just saying um mm -hmm. beautifully molded yeah and like I said the, the the surface detail is very fine as well isn't it the recessed panel lining and stuff mm -hmm. yeah. is is kind of all my hobbies come mm -hmm. IBG standard shall we say yeah definitely I can't you know that I don't think that's an over exaggeration so it is actually not a bad kit at all. You've got to take into a price compared to obviously a Great War one as well, which is probably comparison, I think, as mm -hmm. well, Academy doing E, I think, yeah. when we were yeah. saying. But again, getting Academy kits is a bit of a miss as well. So I reckon, mm -hmm. you know, this isn't, that, this isn't too bad at all. No. No. I say it is a bit odd design how it is done, but... Again, the, the way, you know, as you say, when I went back and reviewed it, actually I get a better look than I do when I'm reviewing it, weirdly. Um, and so the thing is, they've done this thing where the intakes are technically the structural 
the, the chassis, if you like, of the aircraft. So the thing that's quite nice with it is that they've got uh, a sort of system where the engines obviously, or intakes are molded together, so that's it. And then you've got tabs coming off of it that the wings actually attach to. So you don't have that usual problem with eagles of butting in from the side uh, and things like that. But they've done it cleverly because obviously it's a one piece top. Um, you know, as you can see it down in here, it's a one piece top with it. So everything bolts up underneath. So in theory, I can understand what they're trying to do. It should actually give you a very good square system of it all going down in there, which is actually really nice. And again, they've cleverly hidden a lot of the ejector pins under other parts. Yeah. So the actual, it's got full length intakes, which cover the ejector pins, which you would normally get perhaps around the intake area and things like that. The only weird part is, as I say, you don't get that usual thing of an F-15 of having that sort of squared edges, and then they put the fast packs to the sides. You don't get it. So the fast packs are your fuselage halves. So that's why I was saying, I thought it might be modular that they could do a C version from it, but no, you can't. This will be a B only, unless they're gonna design a way of putting the sides on. But the way these tabs work, I think would interfere with it. So, but I, yeah. I'd, I'd look at the instructions when somebody was asking a question on one of our other shows hmm. last week, I think it was. And I found it strange where normally on the main body, you have the front end just plugged straight in. Yeah. On that, it's got an extra bit that goes, so it's giving you like two joins yes. to work out rather than just that one join. It's just, just and also bit. that plug area, I don't know if I've got a picture yeah, of it here, it's, it's, it's really big. big. So it's, in theory, you should end up with a really nice solid uh, join. This tab down in here, yeah. uh, this bottom corner, you can see it's got these large sort of pin areas where it sort of grips and pins as well. And I don't know, as you say, it may be that, you know, perhaps Ravel are working with a different company uh, with these ones uh, and this new way of doing it with these large locating tabs you can yeah. see you know literally if I point them out here you can see them they're at the front here that by the the main gear they're yeah. done in there and obviously you've got them in here and here but these are these wing tags that sort of hang out um, again it will give you a nice thing but little touches like they're keyed so <coughs> you can't put the left and rights on the wrong side yeah. for the tails uh, you know, little things, but the detail actually in the cockpit and the wheel wells and things like that is actually very, very nice. You know, you've got some nice details down in here, but they're quite large locating points, but yeah, and these little little bite tabs in here, but it should make for a good, strong, solid fit. So, so if you often it, look that, at the way Bandai's do it, it's very similar. Well, that first fit there, where you got like the back part of the cockpit. Yeah. You think with that being separate, sorry, the, you know, the, above, the one above that one. Hmm, yeah. You think with that being separate, then there would be Doing a different, different versions thing. yeah i know unless they're clever and they figured out a way to do this system without you know as you say if i just pop back to the early instructions as i say i point it all out in the review but you know so this is the system you've got you put these together and then you put these on but there's no fuselage halves so you're left with a very big open area that then the fast packs go into so unless they the fast packs are going to be replaced by a square-sided one to yeah. go in it just seems normally you would have this as the afterthought bolts onto the square bit on the side but again they could do it and it would fit so maybe that's what they're going to do they're going to design it that way again it's nice to see uh the company's done something a little bit different shall we say from the normal way of putting these things together you know yeah well proofs in building isn't it really to see mm. how it goes together so yeah you know somebody somebody would like to build it Please do, mm. let's know if it does go. Let's know how well it goes together. But generally, it's quite nice because, again, if this is Ravel's latest way of doing it, and say we first saw it, didn't we, with the Razor Crest? Yeah. It, it definitely was different. It wasn't Ravel's normal way. So I thought maybe it was a third party company that actually did all the design work for it. And obviously, Ravel's just taken it on and done it. And they've done it in the past, things like the Atta and things like that as well. Then we saw it on the Mandalorian as well. It's different plastic and it's things. And now we've seen it on that kit. And it, we also have gone back and checked, and they're all made in Poland. Yeah. So it does seem to be that this new Polish plastic certainly is not as prone to sink marks. It's not as prone to flash uh, and all those things as well. But the detail is a lot crispier than we've seen in previous uh, builds. I think as well, you've got to think from a Revell point of view, the logistics, because we don't know obviously where the old kits were manufactured as such, do we? No. Obviously, if it's in Poland, it's next door to Germany. So it's easier yeah, for logistics easier. of getting like kit, the, the kits transported yeah. to mm -hmm to them rather if they've got to get it from half away around the world mm -hmm. you know um it could be that for you know obviously everything as we know is going up in the world obviously shipping crisis that we had last year and supplies and blah de blah and if they've just moved it closer 
to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For that reason, I don't, we don't know. Obviously, that's no. that's what Ravel um, have done. But I think it's better, actually. I, I think, think it's better. It's definitely um, a step up. Yeah. yeah, 100%. So anyway, that's coming in. And uh, when you see this show, this will be on the site because this was a pre-order and what, you know, we've obviously got some stock will be new arrivals. So Andy will put that up, won't you, Andy? Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so go and check out Phil's review. Worth a look. Uh, and the absolutely. next new one we had in that is reviewed let me just move that one out of the way the tools out of the way is the border models stuka in 135th mm. which i've got to say is a kit of two of really impressive surface detail yeah really so, detailed kit got an engine really nice detail fully detailed engine which is really nice as you can see nice detailed cockpit um uh, and then some odd sort of things missing as in seat belts yeah which in you know obviously this being 35th it's not you know we were saying you can probably get away with 30 second seat belts if i'm honest yeah because that's what we were saying but there's no seat belts which you think not even decals which you could have mm-hmm. used and the instrument panel is there is it is there because the dials are there because we did find them yeah but the instructions are a little bit off of how to yeah, use which them, ones you're using um and you <laughs> my uh saying you'll definitely need a mass set so it's you will definitely need a mass set because and how again, they the... glazed it is how a real stuka is but all the glazing is on the inside because it's framed Ooh. yes so but one of the, the highlights for me for this kit is absolutely gorgeous is you've got a beautiful mix of recessed and raised riveting and they are very much in scale oh, uh, it, the, you know you can see here we've got the sort of recessed over the wings and that but it has got raised details with it as well but the raised rivets are absolutely gorgeous it's one of those very tactile kits that you end up stroking it to feel it. Um, it is. But g- generally, it is absolutely spot on. Nice little bit of photo etch as well. It would say you got the decals. With the photo etch, it wouldn't take much. You just put some seabells on it, would it? Well, you would have thought. But this framing, like you know, we were saying, it's true to life. So the trouble you've got is how do you paint the inside of the outside? Because in theory, this is all glazed in this actual area here because it's internal framing which would be green on the inside. So you're gonna to have to do it from the outside. But other companies, you know, Tamiya especially, they did it to the Mosquito, because obviously on that one, you've got internal framework showing with external framework as well. So they did theirs as a, a frame that you put in the inside, really, which showed it perfectly. Unfortunately, this one hasn't. So you're definitely gonna need a mask set because these outer surfaces are just polished. You know, you've got framework running down here, but these internal ones all aren't. So, you can make negatives off the inside because there is framing, so you could actually mask the inside and then make another yeah. one and use that as the negative to do the outside. Yeah, but, but um, no, yeah. it is really very, very nice. It's a great kit, and again, under here you've got these are razor rivets down the back here, and you've got recess down in here, and it, it literally is absolutely gorgeous. Um, mm. You know, very, yeah. very nice one. Have a look at the review on that one because it, it does really highlight that kit very, very well. And again, and I will say it because this is your show and I can't get flamed for it as much, is that why then has Border Models made such a fuss over a certain Lancaster when they can produce it as good, if not better, themselves? Yeah. Here, themselves. Yeah. So they made such a hoo and ha about doing it. And to be honest, it just shows how good Border Models are that they can actually produce that riveting, the finest detail. It's beautifully done right the way through the kit on their own. I don't know. I mean, just when, saying. When me, and, uh, <laughs> me and Nathan reviewed the 109. That's mm. as good. The 109 yeah. is a really, yeah. really nice detailed kit. So, yeah, I totally agree. I mean, their armor kits are really detailed. They're really nice armor kits as well that mm. they do. So, yeah. they've obviously got it in the locker to do it. They know how to do it. I presume I presume from that Lancaster point of view, it would be the research. The research has already yeah. been done, you mm-hmm. know. And like I said, the molds were nearly done anyway. So, instead mm. of starting from scratch, it's it's... From a yeah. business point of view, you know, it was obvious. But yeah, they, they are capable. I, I'm really impressed with this. I think it looked really I cool. Think, yeah, obviously, absolutely. from my point of view, it's a crossover with a scale. And also the little resin figure you get with Rudel mm-hmm. is, is really nice. Really yes. cracking figure. So, yeah, yeah. he is very, very resin. nicely done. It's incredibly sharp, crisp uh, mouldings on this resin figure. And his head, which I don't show in that picture very well, you were saying, because I don't know him, but it does look like Rudel. It does, actually. They so, do you know, like which is off a bonus, isn't it? Because sometimes they're a bit generic, um, but it actually does look like him as well. But, yeah, the little bonus figure in there is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and also, just, just being border, 
I don't know if that figures just for the first release as it normally is, isn't it? You get a extra because they've yes. done it with the 109s and a few other bits and bobs. And then obviously when the next batch comes out, you will not get the figure. But I don't know that for sure. But I would hazard a guess that might be the way they do it. So yeah. if you do want your little figure, you probably, like I say, want to get this first. Mm -hmm. this Did we know book. it included a figure in the first place? You what, sorry? Do we know it included a figure? No. No, so I can't remember it saying anywhere. That no, it, and it doesn't say anything on the box either. Where it normally no. it says yeah. something. Because obviously with the 109, you've got a choice of it was a bit of potluck what you got. Mm. I can't know when we did the pre-order, we didn't advertise it as anything with a figure. No, because I, I didn't know it was coming. Mm. So like I say, whether it is a standard thing with the kit or not, I, I have no idea until obviously the next run. But yeah, real real nice kit, a real iconic aeroplane as well, isn't it? let's be honest. Mm. Yeah. Who's but again, my, my biggest thing was, was that how beautifully it's done. The surface detail is on a par with anything you'd get from other said uh, wingy manufacturers. Yeah. Uh, so again, it just shows that don't think border models took on a certain Lancaster because they couldn't do it because clearly they can because that shows it. Again, really, really nice. But it would be nice even if there was some photo etch harnesses down in there for it. Um, I think that is definitely a bit of a weak point. And it would be nice if it came with a mask set because it's not an easy one to do. And we might be waiting. Hopefully somebody will do a mask set for it rapidly because it definitely needs it, um, you know, as well. But that's literally two complaints, if you like, with it. But that's being really, really picky. And you know when I get picky is when it's a really good kit. Yeah. You know? So don't think it's not a good kit because that's probably the finest Stuka. And I've built similar ones, obviously not a 35th scale, but I've done the Hasegawa one. Um, you know, and again, that just knocks that into a cocktail. That's really nice. So, yeah, definitely be one to do. Yeah, yeah. Put that on my list. It, like we were saying, it'd be interesting to see if they carry on the 35th. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, or they're going to move back to the 32nd, perhaps. I don't know. It, mm -hmm. it will be interesting to see where they go now from, because obviously we, we've known about the 109 and the Stuka for a, over a good year or so now. So they're out. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it'd be interesting to see if they do any more. Mm. But yeah. So they're the okay. two obviously newer kits we've had had in. Yes. Uh, just why I'm here, obviously have you seen this? Because obviously when we were talking about Academy yeah. a few weeks ago, I forgot to pull this off the shelf. Mm -hmm. um, the SR71. Now obviously we know the big massive 48th one came out, didn't it, from Ravel not long ago. Yeah. We're just looking in this before we came on here and actually if you want a quick sort of easy weekend build, mm. I mean, it's not small. I was going to say, it's still a big model. But there's no real seam line, because it's all... So this is the 144 scale SR71. And that's it. And that's it. But again, the beauty about that, no seams, no joins, no awkward fits. Uh, that's a dream kit. That looks really nicely done. And then, don't, don't you need to paint it? Yeah, that's it. Big yeah, old decal scheme. Nice decal scheme as well. But yeah, if you, you know, for a turkey shoot as we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is ideal because I ain't going to take much to put together and, like I say, paint and stuff. So, yeah, just what I thought I'd mention because obviously they do the B52, don't they, and uh, the B1. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In 144. So, yeah. I don't think it's that expensive either, to be honest. I know there's not a lot in it, but. Hello. Look, fully licensed. And it's licensed. Fully licensed by Lucky Martin. There's so. a question for that in a minute. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's sort of. We're up to date, so we've got a few questions to rattle through. So do you want to? Yeah, okie dokie. Move on. Uh, so James is saying, uh, morning team, do we know uh, anything about humbral enamels being axed? Rest in peace, tinlets. If only. If only. Um, again, we haven't had official announcement. No, I'll have to know. speak to a certain friend of mine at Airfix to find out because he'll know. Um, but we do know that apparently there is a something that is in it one of the the products that make it up uh, one of the the elements has been banned in the eu so i think that's why there's that discussion about they're banned in spain so and obviously they're banned in canada and things like that so if they're going to change that said substance or something else I think that's where he's probably got that from because we were yeah. saying that the, you know enamel products are EU. I think it's EU and obviously mm. Canada and California. Yeah. Obviously, mm -hmm. can't sell it anymore. So no. it's, you know, it's a it's not even just a labelling issue; it's a product issue. So whether I have heard from other enamel companies though who do said tinlets as well for ships and things. Apparently, theirs does not contain that problem, so theirs is absolutely fine. 
Just, just an additive then. I, I can't remember what it is now. It's a very probably long-winded code name for it and all the rest of it, product name. But there's one of the elements that go into making it up has been banned now, apparently, in the EU. And that's why it can't go in. And that's why it can't go into Canada. Um, but other people I know who do enamels, they've said that theirs doesn't contain that. So it's absolutely fine to go. If this means Humbrol perhaps might change it for something else that is allowed, maybe that's what they'll do. But there's always been rumours, and there's been rumours for a long time now, that there's a change afoot coming. So I don't know what that is, but uh, apparently, you know, perhaps that may be time for them to do it, or the reason they are making changes to it. So uh, we'll have to see on that one and see what comes out. I mean, my, my, my bugbear is I've got nothing against enamel paint whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it don't smell very nice, but then lacquers don't, to, you know, for some people. Mm -hmm. So it's it's also for courses in that. But it's the tinlet. Yeah, yeah it's just, a bad design. They're just crap. Yeah, they are. They need to be in a jar or something that's easier to decant your paint out of for mm -hmm. what you want. Because, all right, yes. oh, well, you can use pipettes and all that, but you go for a lot of pipettes. You will do. Which is a lot yes. of wastage as well, because obviously mm -hmm. pipettes are made of plastic and all, you know, with what you, you know, and all that sort of thing. And you can't no. really reuse them. No. You know, so no. I just think that, you know, the tinlet bit of it mm. and i think that's same with ravel because they come in tinlets as well yeah yeah which surprises me with them i would have thought mm. they would be more for the jars or or mm. a better way of decanting the paint even dropper yes. bottles would be better mm. yeah. i suppose but you know with enamels they settle they really separate so you've got to get mm. the pigment off the bottom so you do need to be able to get in there and, and stir them up mm. um but yeah that's just my thoughts on it so yeah yeah it's good Okay, so Mark says, hi guys, hope you're all well with us. Uh, he goes, I'm wondering if there's any chance to get hold of Tamiya's 148 scale F117, the Nighthawk. Right, well, originally when we had them, it was a special order from Japan. Hmm. They don't stock them over here, or they don't import them mm -hmm. anymore for whatever reason, which just surprised me a little bit. So we had to buy a carton of them, and we yeah. had it up on a pre-order, because obviously we don't want to be stuck with a, a load for one for one person. So... What I suppose we could do again if there's interest, but I did hear at the minute Hobbyco we get Tamiya from, we're not doing their special orders. Mm -hmm. now, I don't know if that's to do with shipping and COVID from last year, obviously. that That's now, from what I can gather, they're getting a lot of containers back in and um, it should be getting a bit more back to normal, as you can see, for stock levels. So I will ring up and find out whether they are back on or not. I know they've been suspended or stopped, but if there's enough interest, we'll order cotton. Obviously, yeah. you've got to bear in mind, though, it's a three-month lead time from us yeah. ordering them. It's mm -hmm. not like it's going to be next week or the week after, um, yes. because obviously it's when they get another shipment in. But, mm. again, if there's enough interest, we'll put Because, again, last up. time we got in the limited edition one that came with the Humvee, wouldn't it, as well? Yeah, I think it was, and yeah. the which, figures, so... Like I say, I, and I, I don't know if it's even in production with Tamiya anymore, either. Mm. That's what we've got, we'll have to find out. So, yeah. I didn't know where there is one, but it's not for sale. <laughs> unless you offer him a lot of money and he'll <laughs> flog it or he won't shell will yeah, well, okay so graham <laughs> says morning team res have announced that they're back in production and waiting for orders uh do you know of any other companies doing um again that part of the world it's all a little bit up in the air still i would say i would not like to hesitate i haven't heard of anything but that's face it icm said that a lot of their stock wasn't in um ukraine yeah. So uh, they were okay and still shipping. I noticed well, Ravel Master have Box just... Mini Art are still going. Yeah, I've yeah. noticed Ravel's just released the ICM um, um, Tiger. Yeah, biplane, Tiger, Tiger Moth, uh, yeah, which is obviously the ICM kit. They could have had them anyway and then yeah. just waiting to release it. So you don't know how long they've been sat in. But hmm. we know as much as you, to be honest. But it's it, good on res kit. I'm glad they're still yeah, going. Yeah, good to see they're all still they're going. Out. Hopefully, yeah. as to say, we can get things back up and running again it's, it's, fast it's, for them. As we've seen from that Rebel kit, there's other, lots of other companies in that area mm. that can produce kits. So if, if you know, if they if they're lucky enough to get stuff out, mm. or it wasn't there in the first place, you know, it's it's possible that they can get going into it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Stuart says he wanted to ask if we're still planning on stocking the AK third gen acrylics, and we'll be stocking uh, the paint sets that AK do. Right. So we've had a discussion about this. Obviously, me and Phil had a bit of a chin wag on Saturday, didn't we, for most we did. of the day? Yeah. Uh, there's going to be some restructuring of PM models, which will, mm -hmm. will come to light probably next week, week after. We were, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to streamline it a little bit um, and move 
you know, just move some things around, drop some stuff, whatever. You'll see mm. and you'll be informed. But mm. um, yes, we are going to still stock the Gen 3s. That's one reason for the restructuring. Because um, yes. we have said for since last year we were going to do it. For one reason or another, it's not happened. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make that happen. As for the sets, what we're going to do is get the individuals in first. Because that's a big outlay, obviously, yeah. as you can imagine, for a paint, you know, paint rack. Get them in first and then probably later on might be the end of the summer beginning of autumn we are going to start stocking the sets and that is going to be the gen 3 sets and the real color sets i know we did do the armor ones but we've never done the aircraft mm -hmm. but we are going to you know do do both i think yeah. so that is the plan hmm. there so how long it, this has like been in the planning really is most of the gen 3 acrylics are all up on the site ready to go because hmm. i put most of them up last year Mm. Yeah, just wait yeah. for us to, to get them in. So yeah, we will do it. But as I said, we're going to be dropping a couple of lines, some of our slower sellers, shall we say, and we're going to be expanding into new lines. So quite exciting things to come over the next few months yes. as well. And Gen 3s, they're at the top of our list. They have been, as Andy's pointed out, for over a year. Um, but again, it's just been financial. We're making sure we've got the money in place to be able to do it and things like that. So watch this space, though, definitely. Yeah. Uh, Paul says, do you ever have a delivery date for the Mr. Hobby Metallics, especially Dark Iron MC214, my favourite colour of all time? Well, we said going to put a, a said order in because we're out of thinners as well. So right. hopefully, I mean, we did order them last time and obviously if our stockists haven't got them, we can't get them. That's that's a simple answer to it. You yeah. know, um, we're, we're as much to rely on the stockist having them. So mm -hmm. hopefully they'll have a restock and we'll get them back in. Yes, so which is that they, they will get ordered mm -hmm. and hopefully they will come back in. So, that, yeah, that's as much as I can say. Well, that's probably going to be next week now because obviously we're Wednesday now. I've, I've had a little holiday, so I'm on a bit of catch up for the rest of this week. So mm -hmm. me and uh, Andy will next week go through what we need, order it in and hopefully by next weekend it will, it will be up on the site. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, so Mike says, uh, guys, loving the builds uh, along with the shows. Uh, by the way, special mention to Phil and his work on the Hornet. Here she is, almost done. Uh, the work comes to mind. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Anyway, so question about the new Meng Growler. Uh, for some strange uh, paint suggestions, I think the Growler is overall a dark ghost grey and light ghost grey. Am I wrong? No, you are correct. Meng says about going with haze grey over air superiority grey. Uh, I think that's probably obviously the colours that are closest to them, uh, maybe. Uh, am I wrong here? No, you are correct. Stick with yours because this is what this little lady is. As you can see she's streaky and dirty underneath now. Hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, they're, technically it's exactly the same paint scheme as what you'd find on all the Hornet family. So it is light ghost grey over dark ghost grey uh, underneath there. So dark ghost grey all over the top and away you go. It may be that they're picking out that haze grey, as you say, because they've got an interpretation from a photo. And obviously when the weather in, like I've been doing weather in on this, they go a lot darker. So, say, but stick with your guns. Say Mr. Colour, right? Mr. Colour and all me quite good on. Yeah, that's it. But yeah, something's that's... been uh, lost in uh, thingy, in uh, translation there. It may be that maybe that particular jet was painted something different. That's the only thing you do have to watch out for. It's one of the Stingers ones, which I assume I have my book here. And I have checked my references and it doesn't look like it is anything else. It looks like it's just a weathered down version of. So, um, yeah. Uh, it says, one other question. After watching you do the Revel Hornet, do you need to go aftermarket with metal undercarriage? Hence, whilst this one is now fitted with acrylic rod which you can't see on camera, look, see, it hides in there beautifully. Um, again, the thing is with aftermarket metal, and I'm not going to knock on any particular companies, but some companies, their white metal is very soft. And we actually had a member, didn't we, if you saw it this week, on the Flory model site, and he's got a resin kit, and his undercarriage has gone on a 72nd scale model. So some, not all white metal is the same. Some of it's quite soft. Unfortunately, the company, has P-Factor still going? Well, anyway, can I put in here? You can't get any metal undercarriage for that kit, so no, you can't. You're gonna to have to strengthen it a different way because nobody does one. So yeah, yeah, but I don't know about for the um, <laughs> smaller kits for the main kits. Somebody might do metal kit for that. I think. To be fair though, with main, I don't think their undercarriage would be. No, and obviously for smaller kits as well. This is just because it's a large lump on a terrible. I've built hundreds, as you know, 48 scale Hornets over the years, and I've never had a problem with undercarriage only on this one. And to be honest, I didn't have it on the bigger ones either. So, you know. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, just be careful with them. Again, I, if you've seen the video on mine, you'll know that I've put that little post in there now to share the weight, and it does, it makes handling it a lot easier. I can put it down now with confidence instead of thinking it's gonna break all the time. So um, yeah, but keep an eye. But as for the paint colors, go with what you said. You said. So it's light ghost gray with dark ghost gray over the top. Uh, Sean says, hi guys, uh, I know this is not very PC, I better read this first then, in the current climate, uh, but I'm wanting to build a MiG-31 Foxhound in 172nd scale because uh, of storage. My question is, what do you consider the best one, uh, accuracy and buildability? Uh, so far my question that he's found the Trumpeter one and the Zvezda do them. Zvezda is a very straightforward, shall we say. Uh, I wouldn't mind doing the ICM if they did one. Um, as for the MiG-25, that was a nice build. Uh, are there any other worthy uh, con or worth considering? I'd say the Trumpy one. Oh, Accuracy-wise, I don't know. I don't know the aircraft and I don't know, you know. Hmm. Accuracy-wise, would probably would be the Vestas because, you know, they're a Russian company and it's a Russian aircraft. But I don't know. It's an older kit. It's a bit yeah. more basic. It's one of their earlier releases. Hmm. I'd probably go with the Trumpy one. If I'm honest, I think you'll get a bit more out of it. Might be a bit yeah. more straightforward. If Trump is, I you think know, Trumpy probably people built them and they are pretty, yeah. pretty straightforward kit. So, hmm. yes, probably the Trumpy one. Trumpy one for that one. No problem. Okay, Brian says, hi guys. First, uh, thanks for all the content. Second, a uh, quick question about pre-orders. Is there an up-to-date for when the Harrier might make an appearance? Asking as my son is paying for it as a Christmas present and he's itching to do so. Take his money. It's got, it's got <laughs> another eight months yet. What's wrong? Yeah. Christmas. <laughs> oh, God's sake. Sorry. That was, Sorry, a, sneeze. That. <laughs> that was a suppressed sneeze. Oh, um, right. No, basically there isn't. There's a bit of to and fro, shall we say. We've said company and person who's doing it yes. and obviously the molds so yeah we don't i'm not understand i've got no information that i want to put out here yet that's well, that's it. originally we were told and obviously we go on the information that we're told that it was going to be uh, in the new year but clearly now we've gone past that you know we've just been told that there's delays for various reasons so we're not 100 percent. and until we can get a date we don't like to comment as you know no it's not so our place that's why we don't take your cash no <laughs> for reasons like this because we can never guarantee and then say in this day and age sometimes things do slip around a little bit but we know there's a little bit of frustration shall we say uh, on that particular kit uh richie says hello flory team uh i'll be getting a t-shirt soon that you just said that to get you like uh my question <laughs> is is there expected date for the zukamori 109 i'm really looking forward to, uh to building it and was wondering when it was due I, don't, I haven't got a date, but obviously it's it's ordered. We've ordered mm. ours, so I don't know whether they're coming on the next Okimori delivery or the one after. Mm. I don't know, because it's not been released, has it? No. As far no. as I know. So yeah. We were just given a date to when to put our order in, weren't we? And we yeah, did. yeah. Mm -hmm. So obviously yeah. there's a lead time on that. So yeah. I, I don't know, to be honest. We might shoot an email over said person, he'll know. Mm. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll do or a little bit chasing Or he'll that, watch we'll... this later and he'll ring me tomorrow to yeah. say, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, when it is. <laughs> okay, John says, uh, advice, uh, sorry, adhesive recommendation request. Wow. Uh, my 148 scale Tamiya Crusader uh, instructs, uh, instructs styrene parts to be uh, fixed to the die cast metal hull with an instant cement. I suspect they mean CA. Uh, but since the parts uh, are like the drive sprocket axles have some concerns, what would be your ad adhesive recommendation? Yeah, so it's yeah. just CA, it's just, uh, it's just CA. Magnet yeah, it's just... or Black Widow. Yeah. Yeah, For absolutely. Us. If you're ever worried about, you know, obviously with CA being on a sort of structural part, as I say, and stuff like that, you can actually, if you just get a little tiny bit of like a five minute epoxy, uh, and you can use that as well. So, but that's really few and far between. And in 48 scale, I don't think it's a problem. So normal sort of CA or crazy glue, super glue, whatever you want to call it, that's where you, I would go with it. Yeah, so, some of the uh, 48 Tamiya kits, the actual ch chassis is, is uh, cast, mm -hmm. yeah, to give it weight. But yeah. New ones, they put a weight in it, don't they? they, they? It. Yeah, they just put them like metal weights in there, don't they? But yeah, still, the why, why do they bother? I don't get, 
you don't do yeah. anything. Yeah. I don't know why they bother. It's a bit of an odd thing. Well, it's like I did that review of the ship a few weeks ago. That came with loads of it. And it's like, yeah. don't get it. But there we go. Yeah, why so, do you need ballast? Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's it. You know, it's not like it's going to blow away, is it? It's not like you're going to put no. on a howling gale and you've got to wait. That I don't, I don't I mean, get it at all. Hmm. And that's a small 35th scale, mm -hmm. which is probably about the same size as one of them. And, yeah, it's what you wouldn't put weight in that, would you? No, no, no it is a strange yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 I'd like to know if anybody knows why they do it, please, yes. you know, get in touch because I'm curious hmm. why yeah. they still bother. Definitely. Anyway, uh, Kenneth says, hi guys, I was wondering, uh, as you trade in model kits, uh, if any of you know whether or not uh, the kit manufacturer put, uh, puts on the officially licensed logo on the kits because they think they sell more kits or because the company that own the intellectual property rights for the said item are looking for their pound of flesh. Uh, I'm not talking about kits based on movies like Star Wars or Mandalorian, uh, etc. I'm talking about things like Eddard's MiG uh, sorry, uh, P-51 Mustang uh, or the Boeing uh, officially licensed product logo. Boeing didn't even make the P-51. It was North Aviation. Uh, I wish I knew as much that adds to the price of the kit. Oh, it's so definitely licensing. It's definitely but, but Boeing obviously own um, said old company, whatever it is, isn't it? Uh, yes. North American, isn't it? Mustang, yeah, North American it? aviation. America and, they you know, it's it. obviously they've all been um, amalgamated to do to what's the word? I can't say it. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So yeah, the old companies in the US, and it is, I presume, it is more the US than anywhere else. But Lockheed Martin, that's got Lockheed Martin on it. We definitely know yeah. Boeing as well, and off brands that have, have now gone under their umbrella, shall we say? Yeah, but mm -hmm. he's, he's asking why, why did they put the logo on it? Because yeah, I, it is licensing. It licensing. is literally licensing. If you're going to call it an item, like a P-51 yeah. Mustang and stuff like that, um, then you have to theoretically, and again, this is something that's only cropped up in the last five years, um, you know, technically apply to use the name as well because it's actually the intellectual property well, rights of the said company and some companies are a bit zealous over it. Like obviously, obviously, Academy know that they paid the licence. Hmm. Boeing will know that they've paid the license, so they're the two companies that need to know. Mm -hmm. So why do they need to put it on the box art on the because box? Because it's, it's probably good advertising that it is a license. Yeah, that's it. Well. It, could, it could be a Look, stipulation of the license. Yeah. And the it looks good that you've got Lockheed Martin and the little yeah. symbol and all the. Because we've yeah. had this with other said companies who don't bother doing it. Mm. Um, uh, and you know, and so I'm not going to go into the details of the ones, but we thought there may have been some legal action being taken against them, but there hasn't been yet because you know, as you say, someone's you know yeah. clearly uh, yeah. in an office somewhere looking at this type of stuff. Uh, um, yeah, but I, I can understand, like I said, if if they've done it, mm. but there must be some display. Yeah, maybe it's part of the license agreement that it has to go on the box art as well, or like you said, or just a bit of. Mm showmanship that well it... i think yeah personally the way i think they've done it is that they've probably had to pay for the licensing to be able to do it which is fair yeah. enough so a way of like you know getting some of that recoup back is to put it on the box to say this is an official license yeah. because they probably had to do it in the first place but there's another so, thing as well it's actually telling the consumer it is a license they have product, paid. So not a knockoff because yeah. uh, mm. uh, how unless it's on the box is the consumer going to know it is a licensed product mm. not are they because again, I've had conversations with a manufacturer a few years ago now, and they were saying about the troubles that they have because they used to do a lot of NASCARs. Um, but obviously, they need to get the licensing for all the sponsors on the said car. And if they can't, they can't do it. And that's where literally their business started to fall apart uh, because they couldn't get it. Because some of these companies would want tens of thousands of dollars to be able to put their logo on and to me as a you know an end user it seems crazy because you think it'd be free advertising because not only do you get your advert on the model you're on a box art and you're on everywhere else and it's free in theory but no they wanted their pound of flesh to be able to do it well look at f1 look at mm -hmm. f1 you don't get f1 cards anymore for the same yeah. reason because of license and they can't afford it so you know i, I think well, you know the biggest trouble with that because the sponsors aren't around long enough <laughs> <laughs> in a lot of cases yeah <laughs> well, it could be like um when you have your new windows fitted and they want to put a thing on your lawn advertising yeah. maybe maybe lucky martin have said mm. if you put our logo on your box we'll knock you 10 percent off mm. the license <laughs> but i mean it's not like somebody's gonna go out and buy a you know it's not like a car is it no 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 
No, no definitely not. You know what I mean? It's not like everyone's going to go out and buy a F-18 on it, is it? But <laughs> I don't know. Does this also, this is something for somebody can tell me, does, is this the same for armour? Does anybody ever, you know, you buy Abrams tank and it's made by whoever? Do they, uh, or, you, you know, your, your uh, armoured vehicles or your Jeeps and things, do, do they have an official licence? Well, we know, know a lot of Jeeps don't get called Jeeps, do they? No. no. They get the quarter ton trucks, yeah, and we were saying about triple blitzers don't get called yeah. Opal Blitz. It's an it's an half ton truck or whatever it is, hmm. because they can't because Opal's still actually a, a trading brand. company, and Jeep yeah. is, and and such. But I do think obviously because that design is so old, hmm. I think that was discussed. We and you discussed it, didn't we? I think hmm. at some point. Yeah, we then did. it we doesn't come under because on it, it, actually it, I tell you why we discussed it because of something that's coming out that we've got on a pre-order. They can't use the original brand name, which we're not no. mentioned, so don't say it. Mm -hmm. But they can't use that brand name because somebody else owns it. Yes. But obviously, the, the the design actually of the vehicle is so old mm -hmm. it doesn't come under it copyright. Can't count. Anymore. No, it's no copyright. Yeah. It's just but the name. The, yeah, but the name Jeep's still a, a brand name, isn't it? So. Yeah. Yeah, that's still a trading brand name, mm. as in as is Opel. So, mm. hence, and Mercedes. You know, you mm -hmm. do, you, you get all the old Mercedes trucks, but they're not called. Yeah. They're just called what the yeah L fifteen hundreds or whatever they are. But yeah, it's obviously an old Merc truck, but they're still trading. So it's yeah. Mm. It's, it's a more, tricky one. I think it's a minefield yeah. and it's one of those things that has reared its ugly head in the hobby over the last sort of 10, 15 years now. And it's getting more prevalent now. So I think it's just it's one of those things you might be seeing it on the box. Are we paying for it and all the rest of it? I don't know. I'm sure we probably are somewhere along the line. Someone's got to pick up the oh, bill for it. So, you know, so, like in the in the railway world, do they have the same issue of licensing for their products? Know. Do you know, I don't know. You know, and, and of because obviously this isn't just our hobby, is it? No, no This is going to stretch to diecast or mm -hmm. anything, really. I mean, mm -hmm. Lego, if Lego would yeah. have got to be licensed, we know obviously, you know, this is a, I wonder if this is a, I'm not going to think of the company, but, you know, with said, um, you need licensing in certain co mm -hmm. countries. Yeah, yeah, to do, maybe. I wonder if it's an offshoot of that. I think the biggest thing, I don't think it's a bad with the aircraft, I think it's like the F1 and like you say, the motor racing side of it, yeah. the rally cars, and that's where it's been hit for our hobby, you mm -hmm. know, because obviously Tamiya and Fujimi or whatever, a massive player, the Japanese mm -hmm. companies in doing up to date yes. race cars, like, mm -hmm. you know, F1 or whatever rally cars. And now that is just gone. It's yeah, just, it's you know, you now. just can't yeah. get them anymore. So it's a real shame. It mm -hmm. really is a real shame because you know, the massive F1 fans out there will use that as an example and you know, they just can't get a replica of whatever their favourite team or kit or whatever is anymore. It's no, it's a no, real it's shame. It. I don't know. I don't think it's good, to be honest. Hmm. Never anyway. Anyway, Steve says, Hello, yeah. Flory family. Uh, a couple of questions. Which 148 scale MI24 kit do you think is the best in terms of ease of build and part fit? Trumpeter or Zvezda? Well, having built neither... I don't know. And I've price, only ever seen the Zvezda one, so... Price-wise, probably the Zvezda one. It's half the There's price. a lot of aftermarket available for the Zvezda one now. Yeah, half the price of the Trumpeter one, so... And probably it's a nice build, let's be honest. I know the detail, as you've reviewed it, is like it's missing stuff, but not nothing yeah. now you can't get to enhance it. But I would probably say... I bet there's not that much between them build-wise, you know. No, no. I don't know. Without building them, I don't know. So it's take your pick really hmm. generally I though i think the uh, the zvezda one is very accurate shape it's got the the cantilever to the fuselage as well yeah. and the various bits and pieces which have got spot on i assume trumpeters has i haven't heard anything and I've, i haven't seen one of their kits it sort of slipped under the the radar when it came in um but again it's very expensive that's the thing and i know trumpeters one they've gone the other way with the riveting they've put like recessed rivets in around like pa access panels and stuff and they look overdone um you know but again i think you know safe bet of knowing it's going to be good and there's a lot of aftermarket which you can add what you like then uh it'd probably be this best the one if i was going to go down that route yeah uh phil do you know uh sorry uh i know you did a product review of the magnifying glasses you wear but i can't find it i don't think i ever did one i i just wear them these are the cheap ones and they obviously it's a, a universal name these are called uh a, a Sun as in y-o-c-t-o-s-u-n but they're generic so there's about eight million companies make these they're about nine pounds on amazon 
So if you're on Prime, it's free delivery and it comes with loads, you get a little light and everything. And as I say, I just wear these ones. So, but as I say, they're nothing flash and they don't, they only last about a year, but at nine quid a throw, I'm quite happy to do it. I'm not posh like these do have got expensive glass head things. Yeah, but these last a lifetime. and Yeah, they do. Yeah, you get what you pay for, don't you? Yeah. That's buy it. cheap, buy three times, in your case, with them, because the arms fall off. But I'm only paying seven to nine pound a time. <laughs> yeah, but you do a one-off good payment, and they last you forever. <laughs> These are what we wear, yes. which are the... Um, McGonagall. The McGonagall Optivisor. And how much are they? About 40 quid. There you go. Actually, I've got a cheat here because obviously I've got one of them at home and I've got like a a bit of a knockoff version of it to be honest that I got off Amazon and it's all right, but that's better. I wouldn't. Mm. That, these, these ones have got proper glass optics mm -hmm. in them. And, on the and this one here, look, can you see this sort of ribbed effect? Yes. You get a lovely Pattern sort of ribbed head. effect on your forehead, which you've wore it for a while. Which in these, these ones are supposed to have leather. Yes. It, but mine died years but, ago. But sweaty head there has rotted it. You He's can. rotted the leather again, away. Again, these <laughs> ones, you can actually buy all replacement parts for it. So if you wanted to buy a replacement band mm -hmm. for it, you can actually buy the replacement band for it. You ought to get a proper yes. sweatband on, Andy. Yeah. 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 Like they, the they, old uh, 70s, 70s tennis player. Uh, yeah, like tennis player. Not bad idea, <laughs> or, right, or Beyond Bjork. What did he used to wear the sweat? It's not bad idea. I might have a look on uh, Amazon this afternoon. Oh, God. That's him gone. gone. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, if you, <laughs> you for my ones, a flory headband. <laughs> yeah, we need a flory <laughs> headband then. <laughs> uh, but no, for my ones though, there's loads of different names for them. Literally, I've seen them under hundreds of different brand names. Uh, it's just a generic one that's kicked out everywhere. You see adverts for them all over the place. To be honest, they were playing on YouTube the other day, weirdly, yes. for a different one. I had that pop up on me. So, but again, they're just cheap and cheerful. But I like them because, as I said before, I can look around them, uh, and they don't affect me, so I'm all good. He says, lastly, Phil, uh, how are you allowed to remain a British citizen without having built the Airfix uh, British 148 scale AW101 Merlin, also British? This is one of the best helicopter models that I've ever built. Uh, and I've built a lot of uh, helicopters. I would uh, have figured it uh, as a requirement. Seriously, you need to build this kit. I have built it. I did its commission when it very first came out. To be honest, though, the trouble with that kit is... It doesn't, it, well, it's not available anymore, as far as I'm aware, is it? It hasn't been available forever. For a long time, so that's, think... that's a small problem. And the reason it's not available is that that helicopter in real life isn't around anymore. Yeah. Um, don't forget, they all got sent to Westlands, or whatever they're called this week, um, and uh, they were converted into the new junglies. So they think they all went to the Marines. The um, REF, which obviously operated them in that kit, in that box, went down the Chinook route. They all had Chinooks, and they got you know rid why? of them. Because the Chinooks actually were more reliable and were broke every 10 minutes. Well, yeah, they did go tech a lot. Uh, so uh, <laughs> and that was it, you see. So as you say, we get them flying around here because obviously they're now grey and they've changed them as well. They've got the thing where the tail rotor folds up now and all the bits and pieces. Uh, but they've still got the rear ramp and they've still got the twin gear. That's how you spot them over the normal Merlins. It was a shame, though, because I was really hoping we would get a 48 scale naval one. And obviously, Italeri famously had it in their catalogue for a couple of years as yeah. a, a, a coming soon job, uh, and it never arrived. We just never got it. And if that had turned up, definitely, because I get buzzed by them almost two or three times a day here. Yeah? So, uh, yeah, low level. But, um, yeah, it's a shame we didn't get that one. But seriously, if somebody's planning on releasing one of them, Airfix, that would be a good call. Yeah, I can, don't, I can donate one of those to you if you want to build another one. What, uh, the RAF one? Yeah. I could convert it, couldn't I, into being the new, I can't remember what they called it now, is it the HC4, whatever configuration is? So, uh, but yeah, turn it into a jungly. Yeah. So, hmm, there's a plan, could do that, that'd be a one. Anyway, probably won't. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's it, that's the question's done. Very good. Um, just to look around the site, as I say, it's a little bit slow going at the moment. We have obviously got the Stukas uh, up here and a few of these other bits to say. Have, have you refreshed it yet, Andy? I have, yeah. If you just, um... Oh, I'll just refresh it. It will change now. Sorry, I didn't do it earlier. There we go. So obviously the uh, Tempests are back in. They've come in today uh, and the various bits you can see just down in here. So that's all of those new ones in there. Our special section, as I say, we've got something special for that coming up soon. So it's a bit thin on the ground down in here. As you can see but there is some bits and pieces if you want to grab yourself some damaged boxes 
uh, and some yeah. sort of you know bits in there like that as well. So we will sort that out very very soon as well on those ones. Just to let everybody know as well, who put pre-order in for the hurricanes that you built, they're mm -hmm. ordered. They should hopefully be in next week. And also we've got some outstanding orders on the little mini drills off the site, yes. and they're coming back in as well. So these yes. bad boys. Head hurricane. Nice hurricane, he's all hurricane. weathered now and looking nice and all the bits, so yes. Yep, so there's a few things coming in anyway, so yeah, all good. Nice, good job. Right, okay then guys, we'll call it right there. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, absolute pleasure. Remember, get all your bits and pieces over at the PM store. Stuff does change literally by the hour at some points uh, <laughs> as we're going through. And obviously Ooh, we'll keep you up to just, date with the pre-orders as when we, and when we know. Just before we go, hmm. do you know that thing I sent you over, Andy, the other day for the paints that came in? Yeah. They're up, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. If, I, if you go into um, tools. 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 Uh, tools. We have got the um, tell me a pink mixing jars. If anyone, oh, the jars are in. We were talking about these. Uh, oh, God, so yeah, the empty have, jars. That was it. Yeah, the empty jars are in. Only one pound ten for the Tamiya empty jar. This is the ten mil one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, we have got the large ones on order, but they ain't got any stock yet. So yes. Yeah. Okay, like I said, so that's the it, jars. So I what you need is a, is a pouring spout to go with it. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. You, yeah. You'll need a pouring yeah. spout to go with that, and then you'll be good to go. So yes, so when I did order them, and I mentioned it, I ordered a box full, and I did get a box full, which was six in a box, and not a carton. Yes. So now, so now we've, we've, we've got some in. So yes, yeah, so you do want any empty Tamiya jars for your uh, mixing things, then we haven't got the little plants back in as well from Tamiya, you know, the ones that go on there. Oh, the thingy ones? Yeah, the little. Oh, no, that's the trumpeter one. No, oh, no, Dan, Tamiya's in its own section. Oh, is it? Well, it's got sections now. Yeah, we've done it. Yeah, look. That, that's posh. Oh, these ones? Yes, yes, them. The alligator clips that clip we in. We sell the a lot of little alligator clips, to be honest. Yeah. So, yes, we've got those in as well. And we've had more paint stocks come in. Yeah. Oh, so, LPs and excess ones. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, all very good nice. in it. Good job. Very, very nice. Right. Okay, then, guys, we will call it right there. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back with you next week. And also, you've got the live show tomorrow night, 7 30, if you want to join us for that one. Right. Okay, guys, happy modeling. Take care. Say goodbye, gentlemen. We're out of here. Bye. Bye. Bye.